Wow. 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 Hello, this is Luke from Corn of Audio. I hope you are well today. Please subscribe below. Today I'm playing with the brand new Corn of Audio Wow Thing plugin. Wow. Now some of you might have the Wow Thing and you're going, but Luke, what does this really do? I mean, all it seems to do is make things wide and then fake the bass. How often do the how often does one do that sort of thing? The answer is quite a bit, actually. This thing is really handy. Let's get into it. My friend Brian Epp sent this song. So it's like, you know, four stereo pairs of whatever madness Brian's up to. And we're just gonna use the wow thing only. Wow. First, the drums. Kind of dig that cymbal thing, but if you notice, they sound sort of tight. They're mono-ish. I'm going to open them up with the uh, wow thing. Now you're also gonna notice that they're gonna get wetter, or seemingly wetter. The wow thing is an MS processor, so it has a mid-channel and a side-channel. If you know anything about MS processing, and I, I, I've written something on this, I'll have to post it up. The side channels tend to pick up ambiance and tend to have more of the reverb of things. You'll notice as I turn up the wow, it's gonna get wetter in addition to getting wider. Wide and wet, that's how I like my drums, okay. Hear the reverb come up. Now if I really crank The center vanishes when the S channel is way up, the stereo field collapses. And if you listen to that for a long time, you might even start getting seasick. It's very phasey and that, that phasiness is very bothersome. I'm going to pop it in and out real quick. I'm going to throw up. Oh, now I'm better. No, I'm going to throw up. I'm going to back this down. And that's out. And that's it. Now it's gotten a lot brighter, and that is sort of how the wow thing works. The wow thing has a really kind of crazy EQ curve to it. It boosts the highs, it kind of boosts everything above a thousand, then kind of cuts everything below a thousand. So it's a tilt EQ, right? So then you use the true bass to add the bass and the kick and stuff back in. So I'm just going to bring up the true bass. can bring this way up. That's almost too much down there. Or is it just at the wrong frequency? Click on the handy dandy nameplate. And now you can pick out the frequency. So it's at 60. I'm going to set it to 40. Let's see what that sounds like. Here's 60, here's 400. It's kind of nice too. That 400 would be really handy if I wanted to pop out the snare. I don't really want to pop out the snare. I'm gonna go down to 60, or rather 40. Let's hear the whole thing. Let's play with this guitar, this, this guitar solo, shall we? It's got an auto pan on where he's turning. Feels like an auto pan. Let's make that more extreme. Hmm, how do we make that more extreme? Let's use the wow thing. On this guitar part, I'm just gonna crank up the wow and see what happens.
Oh, that's much cooler. It's actually outside my speakers. Uh, it gets me nauseous if I turn it up too much. Now, once again, because of the nature of the way the wow thing works, it really changes the frequency balance. So we're going to go back and pop in some true bass and we're going to do 150 hertz because that's like where the low of the guitar kind of lives. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah. So here's before. Here's after. Here's the whole thing. I can use a little true bass. No, I could use a little more wow. Excellent. I love this thing. So the last thing I'm going to fix is the bass guitar. For the most part, if you listen, the bass guitar is kind of lost. So I'm going to play some games with this because I know the circuitry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to overload the input stage a little bit and I'm going to overload the wow output a little bit and then I'm going to crank the uh, overall output trim down. Now why I want to do this, when you overload stuff, does it look like I'm staring into the middle of the screen? I hate looking at the camera. It's like, hello, I'm looking at the camera and I end up staring at the middle of the screen. And then like my Uncle Phil, his eyes would always look over your shoulder and it was annoying. I was like, hi, Lukey. Why am I going to overload stages of the input, stages of the output? When you overload stuff, you, you automatically get a little bit of compression happening. It's saturation. But as you clip, as you push a waveform up, it sort of clips. So the, the net result is compression. I wrote an article on this on the Cornup website. Go there and look it up. So I'm going to do that. When I overload stuff, not only does it compress, it also adds harmonic distortion. And harmonic distortion generates additional harmonics. And those are usually high frequency. So we're going to do that now. the distortion put this in the mix it's gonna be way too loud I wouldn't mind though changing the bass frequency a little bit so I'm gonna go around back here I'm going to play with the bass frequency now I put the kick at 40 I don't want to put the bass around 40 because it's going to be in the same place as the kick. With your low end, you kind of want to think of, like, if your bass is here, you're going to put your kick above it. Or if your bass is here, you're going to put your kick. But I'm saying the same thing. You have your kick. Maybe that's the lowest. You have your bass. Maybe that's above it. You have your guitars. Maybe that's here, right? You try to keep those things separate out. Think like lasagna. Now you remember that if you distort something too much, you start getting rid of the transients because distortion is basically a rounding off of the waveform. So I'm losing some of the articulation and the attack on the bass by distorting it so much. So too much distortion is not a good thing for your articulation of stuff. Things get mushy in the transient neck of the woods. So I'm going to back down some of my distortion. Really works good. What really works good for this kind of distortion-y trick? The pawn shop comp. Can't can't resist. 
resist it. I gotta put some wow on it. Oh, that sounds good. Okay, so I forgot if you turn the wow all the way down, you eliminate the side channels and you basically have just the mono signal and it really tightens that thing up. So this sounds actually really good. Now here's the bass before and after. Before. After. And you hear the distortion? Very cool. Here's the whole thing. Okay, I, I like this quite a bit. I like the whooshiness of the cymbals. Um, I just dig that sort of uh, Beatlesque vibe that you get when you flange cymbals. Not that I flange cymbals with the wow, but when you add a lot of phase. Uh, what is flanging? Flanging is a lot of phase. So I guess it feels like flanging somewhat. Um, and then just how the whole thing kind of pulls together. The song is yet somehow bigger. The bottom end is tighter. This is This is good. Okay, here's before and after. I'll level match it. Okay, well, there you have it, the wow thing in its uh, wide and bassy glory. It's a really fun plug-in. It's really, really useful. One of the things I like about it is it's so quick. There's a lot of ways to enhance bass, and um, some of them are quite a bit of work. There's a lot of workflow to it with triggering and blah, 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 blah. The wow thing is just put it on and pick a frequency, and you're done. And for certain types of things, like if you want a big tubby kind of sound down there. It's terrific. And then of course the wow effect. Use that tastefully or use it tastelessly. It's fine. It's your plug-in if you have one. All right. So that's it for now. And I'll talk to you later. Thanks for stopping by my little studio. It's delightful having you over. Rock on, Cornif Audio. Subscribe. It's the third time I said that. Will you finally listen to me?